Yasomati Nandana Braja Paranagara Kokula Rangana
व्यासम तो जय मुधिर तो जय मुधिर नष्ट प्रेशु वपत्रेशु नष्ट प्रेशु वपत्रेशु नित्यम भागवत सेवाया नित्यम भागवत सेवाया भागवती उत्तम श्लोके भागवती उत्तम श्लोके भक्तिर भावती नष्ट की भक्तिर भावती नष्ट की so, in our Krishna consciousness movement, we are worshipping Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and we accept Lord Chaitanya as being the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Now, not everybody, of course, understands this. There are many people who may be devotees of Krishna. But not everyone accepts Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Lord Chaitanya is a very special avatar. Of course, we call him Kali Yuga avatar, but he's a, a very special avatar. In the seventh canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam, Prahlad Maharaj is offering prayers to Lord Nisringadev and he describes to Lord Nisringadev how the Lord comes in three yugas. He is known as Tree Yuga. He doesn't always come in the Kali Yuga. Well, of course he comes, but he, he doesn't come as a Lila avatar. He will come as a Yuga avatar because in every age there is a Yuga avatar. Bhagavad Gita says, Sambhavami Yuge Yuge. The Lord comes in every age, every Yuga. So, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is a special avatar. The Lord is called Tree Yuga because in the Kali Yuga, he will come in a covered form. He will not reveal himself to everyone. Lord Chaitanya never liked his devotees to address him as being the Supreme Lord. He wanted to have the mood of a devotee. He came in the Kali Yuga it is described in the Chaitanya Charitamrita how the Lord comes in the Kali Yuga to assume the mood of Srimati Radharani, Radha Baba, Radha Baba Jyoti, Jyoti Subalitam. In the Chaitanya Charitamrita it describes how the Lord appears in the Kali Yuga to relish the mood of Srimati Radharani. And how does he relish that mood? He relishes that mood by Sankirtan, by chanting the holy name. So, of course, this is the Yuga Dharma. In every age, there's a process by which people can become self-realized. In the Satya Yuga, the process was meditation, right? To sit silently and meditate. Do you know anybody who did meditation in the Satya Yuga? Who meditated in Satya Yuga? Um, huh? Hiranyakashi, he did, he did meditate, you know, he did austerities to get power, to get mystic power. Yeah, you, you, he did, he did tapasya. He did so much meditation that all the flesh of his body was eaten. <laughs> but he remained alive. And then Lord Brahma came, he was meditating on, who was he a devotee of? Huh? Haranyakashipu, who did he meditate? 
Brahma. Brahma, yes, right, Lord Brahma. So Lord Brahma appeared and revived him. So the demons do like that. The, but there was a great devotee, there was someone else who was a devotee named, the wife, he was the wife of Devahuti, Kardama, Kardama Muni, right. Kardama Muni, before his marriage, he was a brahmachari and he was meditating and he meditated for 10,000 years. Satya Yuga, people lived a long time. They lived some people could live one lakh, one hundred thousand years. So Kardama Muni was meditating ten thousand years and then he got a wife. The Lord personally, well Swayam Bhuvamanu brought his daughter Devahuti. All right? Devahuti came there and she became the wife of Kardama Muni. She stayed with him in the ashram. She'd been living in the palace with her father, Swayam Bhuvamanu. They lived in the palace. But then she went and got married to a man who lived in the forest in his ashram. So she did great austerities. But later on, they had a child. Who was the child? Kardama Muni and Devahuti? Kapil. Kapil, yes, Kapil Muni. And they had also daughters, nine daughters. So, the, like that. So, their marriage was successful. Uh, Satya Yuga, the Lord appeared, Kapil Muni. Treta Yuga, the Lord comes. The process in Treta Yuga is not meditation. The process is yajna. yajna. <coughs> so people were very fond of doing yajna in Treta Yuga. Who lived in the Treta Yuga? Huh? Lord Ram, yes. Lord Ram did yajna, right? He did yajnas. He was a king and he had to do yajnas. Now the king supposed to do yagya, supposed to sit with his wife. But his wife had gone, she'd gone back to there, she left. They had, of course she left her sons, love and push remain, but she went back to the earth. Lord Ram had no wife, so what did he do? He had a deity, Mother Sita. And when he would do the yagya, Mother Sita was there in the deity form with him. So that was Treta Yuga. Then Dwapara Yuga, what's the process in Dwapara Yuga? <laughs> deity worship, yes, Archana. It's all in the deity worship. Who, is Ari? Who was doing very nice deity worship? In Treta Yuga, in Dwapara Yuga, in Dwapara Yuga, who? Amrish. Yeah, Ambarish is a good example, yeah, I think so. Maharaj Ambarish, Sabai Mana Krishna Karara Vindayar, Vachamsi Vaikuntha Gunana Vanane, Kalo Harir Nandir Marjanadishu, Shrutim Chakra Jutta Sakatodaye. Maharaj Ambarish, he was a king, but he was always in the temple and he was doing so much seva in the temple, worshipping the deities and chanting and hearing. He was very busy in deity worship. The Lord appears, Lord Sri Krishna appears at the end of Dwapara Yuga and the Lord is worshipped there by his associates who were all there in the Yadu dynasty. They all worshipped him. And they carried the umbrella, the white umbrella over his head and they had chamaras, yak fans, yak and peacock fans and yak and chamaras to worship the Lord. So that was Dwapara Yuga and then Kali Yuga comes, Kali Yuga comes. Kali Yuga people not very good, very lazy, <laughs> they won't get up in the morning. 
<laughs> they don't want to chant Hare Krishna. We do everything else, they won't chant Hare Krishna. So Kaler Kaler what it said Kaler Doshanidi Rajan Astiye ko Mahaguna Kirtana Deva Krishna Shya Mukta Sangha Param Prachet. The age of Kali Kaler Dosha Nidhi Raja, it's an ocean of faults, right? Uh, what are the faults? Manda Samanda Matayo, Manda Bhagya Upadruta. Prayena Payasa Sabya Kalovas Minyuge Jana. Manda Samanda Matayo, Manda Bhagya Upadruta. People in the Kali Yuga, short life. In the Sati Yuga, one life. Treta Yuga, 10,000 years. Dwapara Yuga, 1,000 years. Kali Yuga, hardly anybody lives to 100. <laughs> very good. If you get to 70, you're doing very well. <laughs> so, uh, Kali Yuga, short life and lazy, misguided, unlucky, and always disturbed, Upadruta. Mind is not peaceful, very disturbed. Mobile phones to disturb the mind. Disturbing us all the time, everything. So many disturbances. Kali Yuga. So we have all your telephone from the upstill? So, the process in the Kali Yuga is given, kirtan, you have to do kirtan, the chanting of the holy names. It is described in the eleventh canto Srimad Bhagavatam, Karabhajana Muni met with the nine Yogendras. Oh, Karabhajana Muni, he's one of the nine Yogendras and he met with Nimiraj, Maharaj Nimi. The Maharaj Nimi wanted to know about the Lord's incarnations in each age. So Karabhajana Muni described, in the Saji Yuga, Lord comes, he has a white color. In the Treta Yuga, he's red colored. In the Dwapara Yuga, dark color. And the Kali, Kali Yuga, yellow or golden color, different colors in different ages and different processes in each age. According to the time and the situation, different process. We did Satya Yuga, meditation, Trita Yuga, Yagya, Dwapara Yuga, temple worship, Kali Yuga, we cannot do any of these other things hardly, pr can't do them properly. So we have Kirtan. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to inaugurate this sang Kirtan. And Karapajana Muni describes how the Lord said, Krishna Varnam Tevish Akrishnam Sangha Pangrastra Parshadam Yagnaye Sankirtan Praye Yajantihi Sumedasaha. Karabhajana Muni is describing the process in the Kali Yuga. I said, Krishna Varna. Varna means occupation. Just like somebody is a Brahman, somebody is a Vaishya, somebody is a Sudra, somebody is a Kshatriya, four different divisions, different Varnas. So this person is this his occupation is Krishna Varna, meaning he's doing everything for Krishna. He's always chanting the holy name of Krishna. The chanting of the holy name of Krishna, very vital in the Kali Yuga. <coughs> in other ages, there was also the chanting of the holy name. But in other ages, there were other processes. But in the Kali Yuga, there's only the chanting of the holy name. There's no other process. 
Of course, you can chant the holy name in different ways. You can do japa or you can do kirtan. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was doing kirtan. Krishna Varna Devesh Akrishna. Akrishna means, well, Krishna can mean blackish, but this incarnation of the Lord is described as Akrishna, meaning he's not black. He's not black. He's come in a golden color, golden complexion. So, Lord Krishna was the dark blackish color, but this Lord Krishna has come and he's a blackish color. He's not blackish, he's, he's, he's golden. Gargamuni was sent to do the naming ceremony of Lord Krishna and Lord Balaram. Vasudev arranged for Gargamuni to go and to name these children. And he when he came to give the name for Lord Krishna, he described, oh, this, this child takes birth in every age. And in each age, he has a different color. And he described, he said, in the Satya Yuga, a white color. In the Trita Yuga, the red color. Now he's come Dwapara Yuga. So he's in the darkish black color. And he will come in the future in the yellow color. Gargacharya knew that the Lord's in coming in each age in different colors. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared and he is also golden color. So he was known as Goranga because he's a golden color. And he was always doing Sankirtan. From the beginning of his life, he was engaged in Kirtan. He was born, what day was he born? Purnima. Purnima, yes. And what was happening that Purnima? Yes, it was the eclipse. And when there's an eclipse, it's considered very inauspicious time. Everyone will go <laughs> bathe in the Ganga and they will chant the holy name. So everyone was chanting the holy name at that time. Mahaprabhu came to give the chanting of the holy name and he was chanting the holy name. And he said even the Mohammedans were also chanting because the Mohammedans were making a fool of the Hindus. They were chanting. They think, hey Krishna, hey Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. <laughs> the Mohammedans sometimes m mimic the chanting of Hare Krishna. So they were also chanting. And then as a child, he would cry. And the, the ladies who were taking care of him they could not get him to stop crying until he would do kirtan. When they did kirtan, then only he would stop his crying. So in this way the child was revealing, he was showing his pastimes, how he has come to give the chanting of the holy name to everyone. So Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu inaugurated the Sankirtan movement but initially he got involved in pastimes of scholarship. But then after his father left the world, then he decided he wanted to go to Gaya. And he went to Gaya and there he met Ishwara Puri and there he was initiated in the chanting of the Holy Name. Then he came back. On the way back to Mayapur, he came through a place called Kanai Natsala, a very special place, Kanai Natsala, a place where Lord Krishna dances, very special, on the bank of the Ganges. We have our Iskon temple there. You can go there and be there, enjoy that very powerful spiritual atmosphere. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu then came back to Mayapur 
and he told all the devotees that we should gather together and have kirtan. And they had kirtan, of course, they had every night kirtan. No need to sleep. Why waste so much time sleeping? Just have kirtan all night. So Lord Chaitanya was having the kirtan in the Srivas Angam. This way he was establishing the Yuga Dharma, the Sankirtan movement, the chanting of the holy name. So Lord Chaitanya himself wanted everyone to chant the holy name. But people were complaining. They said, no, this is a Vedic mantra. Vedic mantras are only for the brahmanas. So then Lord Chaitanya changed the mantra around and instead of chanting Rama first, he chanted Krishna. He said, now everyone can chant. Lord Chaitanya wanted to give the mercy to everyone. He came to save, he's known as Patita Pavan, the deliverer of the fallen soul. And of course, he ordered Lord Chaitanya, Lord Nityananda and Haridas to go and to get everyone to chant. It's stated in the Chaitanya Bhagavat, a very special Bengali book, Bengali literature. In, if you study Bengali literature, they will read the Chaitanya Bhagavat. It's Bengali poetry. So there it said, Suno Suno Nityananda Suno Haridas. Lord Chaitanya is speaking and he's saying, Suno Suno Nityananda Suno Haridas. Sing, listen. Haridas. Nityananda, listen. <laughs> listen. <laughs> Suno Suno Nityananda Suno Haridas Priti Gari Gari Gya Koro E Bhiksha Bolo Krishna Bajo Krishna Koro Krishna Shiksha Yes, right. Koro Krishna Shiksha. So he, t he told Lord Nityananda and Haridas, go everywhere, every gully, every lane, knock on every door and beg the people, read the books about Krishna. Worship Krishna and chant the name of Krishna. So they would go, Lord Nityananda wanted to deliver all the fallen souls and he decided he would find the most fallen people to deliver. So there were these two Jagai and Madhai, they were from Brahmana family, but they become very fallen. They were drunkards. They spent the whole day, every day they had alcohol, drinking, intoxicated. And they were very sinful. They did terrible things. If there was an old man with a young daughter, they would knock the old man in the head, and throw him into the ditch, and they would rape the young girl. They would do things like that. They were very sinful. But Lord Nityananda thought, if they can become devotees, then everyone will know how merciful Lord Chaitanya is. So Lord Nityananda wanted everyone to understand, to appreciate who is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So that's why he picked Jagai and Madhai. Let me go to them. Let me deliver them. If they will become devo everyone was afraid of them. If they saw them coming, they'd run away. Nobody wanted to be around them. They were so sinful. They were such evil people. But Lord Nityananda, he went to them and he asked them, chant the holy name. And they said, huh? <coughs> Came angry. Where's my wine bottle? And they, they came, wanted to beat Lord Nityananda. So Haridas 
and Nityanath had to run away. Well, Haridas was not happy. He was an older man. He would complain to Nitai. He'd say, Nitai, you know, you, you get me in trouble. They'll kill me. He was running. I have to save their life. Haridas would, he would complain about this Nitai. Yeah, I have to go with Nitai. He said, sometimes he will joke with the young girls and he will ask them to marry him. And sometimes he was swimming in the Ganga where the crocodiles are. He said, I, I, can't, I, can't go, I can't manage anymore, I can't put up with him, he's too unusual, he's too strange. But Lord Chaitanya said, no, no, just please give your mercy, be with him, take care of him. And Lord Nityananda then, of course, he, although he failed in the first attempt to get Jagai and Madai to become devotees, he didn't give up. So that's very important for us to understand that we may try to do something, we may not be successful, but don't give up. We say, failure is the pillar of success. Go on, keep trying. Just like Srila Prabhupada was trying to preach, he was trying to establish Krishna consciousness, and he was staying in India, and he was printing his magazine and started to print books also. But he was not getting any support. Nobody was interested. He would go to people and say, you have nice young boys, why don't you give one of your boys to me, let him come with me and he can preach Bhagavad Gita. And they would say, oh no Swamiji, I want my son to become a lawyer or be an engineer or be a doctor, then proud. Let, him be, let him come with me, we'll preach the Bhagavad Gita all over the world. Oh no, no Swamiji, let my boy be a nice karmi. <laughs> right? <clears throat> they didn't like to give their children to Prabhupada to take up Krishna consciousness. So Srila Prabhupada had to go to the western country. <coughs> he was not, he tried in India. He tried, he went to one town in India called Jansi. Jansi, it's near to Delhi, not very far. So he was trying there, he wanted to start a society there and people were interested. But then well, somebody else got the building. He couldn't couldn't get the building he wanted. So he had to give up. So then gradually he under he tried to go to America and he got the free passage and go there to America. And in America he was not getting any support. He didn't know anybody. He was living alone. He was go he would well first he went to one couple. One couple were living in Pennsylvania the Agarwals, they had sponsored him. So Prabhupada stayed there for a little while and then he came to New York. And he came to New York, he had the name of one man, a Mr. Mishra, Dr. Mishra. He was teaching yoga. So Prabhupada would go to him and Dr. Mishra helped Prabhupada a bit. He gave him some accommodation and Prabhupada would go to his yoga class and sometimes he would sing bhajans and talk. But whenever you start talking, Dr. Mishra would say, okay, stop it. No. <laughs> he, he didn't like Prabhupada to preach. Prabhupada was telling Dr. Mishra, your name is Mishra. Lord Chaitanya's father was Jagannath <laughs> Mishra. You are the family. You should help us spread this mission of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He would say, oh, Swamiji, no, no, we'll do this yoga. So then somehow Prabhupada heard how he could go to another part of New York because he was living uptown. But they told him, if you go into the, uh, the lower side, the lower east side of New York, the place called Greenwich Village, all the young people are there. There are many young people living there, the accommodation is cheaper. And he said, there's a lot happening down there. 
There's a lot of things happening. It was the 1960s. It was a, a very special time. You know, the whole Western world was changing. And there were pop music and there was rock and there were so many things going on. And so Prabhupada came there to this lower end of New York and he managed somehow, he, well, he, stayed, he stayed with some people and then they helped him, to, other people helped him to get a place. And he got a little storefront, a little storefront where somebody had made it a gift shop previously. Previously they'd been selling gifts and the name of the shop was Matchless, Matchless Gifts, right. So Prabhupada kept the name. He kept the name of the shop, Matchless Gifts. He thought it's a good name for Krishna consciousness. <laughs> and the whole shop was not very big. If you go there today, you, now we own that place. You can go there and see the place. It's not very big. It's smaller than this room. But Prabhupada was sitting there giving class. So he didn't give up. Although he was very old, he kept trying, kept trying. And gradually people started to come. So Lord Nityananda, he failed the first attempt with Jagai and Madhai, but second time he went and tried again. And this time he got hit. They hit him on the head with a pot of wine. And he was bleeding and Lord Chaitanya heard and Lord Chaitanya came, he was ready to kill Jagai and Madhai. But Lord Nityananda begged him that, no my Lord, in this age you must be merciful. So all of us in our preaching, we have to be very merciful, we have to be very tolerant, we cannot expect to be successful. But don't give up. We keep trying. We keep trying. Just like here in Holland. We, we had a big temple at one point in Amsterdam. Now, the, just a smaller place. We had, somehow we gave it up. We had to, and they're just the devotees are operating, operating from a small place. But still, so many other centers have come up around Holland and so many different cities, different places, parts of the country, centers are there. So preaching is going on. More and more people are getting the holy name, becoming devotees. And certainly Krishna has a plan. We have to continue to make more nice attempts to please Krishna. How to please Krishna? Krishna is pleased when you will distribute the knowledge of Krishna consciousness. Nachatasman manusheshu kaschen me priya kritama. Bhagavad Gita, 18th chapter, Krishna said, there is no one more dear to me than that person who is trying to dis distribute, trying to give that knowledge of Krishna to others. So as devotees, this is our business, to tell people about Krishna, right? Lord Chaitanya told the Brahman at Kurmakshetra, wherever you go, whoever you meet, tell them about Krishna. The Brahmana wanted to leave his home. He wanted to go with Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But the Brahmana was a, fa he was a householder with a family. So Lord Chaitanya did not encourage people to be irresponsible. If people have some responsibility, they should continue with that responsibility and serve Krishna at the same time. So Lord Chaitanya told that Brahmana, 
don't talk like that. When the Brahman is saying, I will come with you, I cannot tolerate this material life, Lord Chaitanya chastised them. He said, don't talk like that. You stay here and whoever you meet, you tell them about Krishna. And in this way, you become a guru and you save the world. So Lord Chaitanya, Amaragaya Guru Hana Tarae Desh. Lord Chaitanya said, by my order, become a guru, become a teacher. Tell people about Krishna. That is the business of the spiritual teacher. To tell people about Krishna. Chanting the Hare Krishna mantra, reading the books about Krishna, worshipping Krishna. This is our business as devotees. And we, we want to share. We want to share whatever we have with other people. We don't just keep it for ourselves. It's for sharing, for giving. Prabhupada said, I did not go to America to beg. I went there to give. And what do we have to give? We have a lot to give. We have the holy name. We have Mahaprabhu's mercy. We have this Krishna <coughs> consciousness movement. So we have to distribute this message for behalf of Srila Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada used to ask Tamal Krishna Goswami. I used to work with Tamal Krishna Goswami. Tamal Krishna Goswami was Srila Prabhupada's secretary. And at one point, he was with Prabhupada in India, but he wanted to go back to America. He wanted, he found it, you know, difficult working in India. At that time there were no temples or, it was very, very pioneering time in India. And he had heard how in America there's a lot of preaching opportunities. So he wanted to go back to America to preach. So he went back and he formed the Radha Damoda, Radha Damoda party. And they had buses and they had many young men traveling in the bus. And every bus there was a couple of sannyasis. And the buses were going all over America. And the boy, there was young men with them. Young men would go out and distribute books. And they do Harinam, they do programs, festivals. So Prabhupada came there and he would ask Tamal Krishna Goswami, we don't want to know, how many books have you distributed? How many devotees have you made? How much property have you acquired? Prabhupada wanted results, you know, by working for Prabhupada, Prabhupada's here. You know, Prabhupada wanted results. And he would want to know, what results have you got? How many books have you distributed? How many devotees have you made? How many properties have you got? That you can tell what is success based on these things. Our business is like that. Of course, that was in 1970s. It's a bit, times are a bit difficult here now. Distribute books. And, well, we have, everybody has e-books, you know, mobile books, that, to get people to have a hard copy. They still, you can still distribute books. As Srila Prabhupada's Lila Amrita is being reprinted in the Dutch. Okay, good. Yes. And there is again a book distribution. Yes, Prabhupada's Lila Amrita will come out in the local language, in Dutch. Very good. We are also printing in Chinese, for the Chinese people. We already printed Lila Amrita, it's already out. We're, we have many books in Chinese language. So, we need, to, we need to print the books, we need to make them available. It, it's not quite the way it was before, you know, that we could just be on the streets and distribute. But there's still many opportunities for book distribution and for preaching. You can distribute a lot on the internet. Use the mobile networks and you can preach to people without even going out the house. You can be preaching. 
during the COVID, we had so much preaching. The devotees in Bangalore, they did a PowerPoint presentation on the Bhagavad Gita, a chapter a day, one hour a day, one chapter. And you could, this way, every, if you did one chapter a day, how many days did it take to finish the Bhagavad Gita? 18. 18 days, right. So in 18 days you can go through the whole Bhagavad Gita. And we had, we had thousands of people take these courses. And we, we, translated the, we translated the course into all different languages. And we, so many parts of the world we shared this good knowledge. Because many people want to learn the Bhagavad Gita. They want this knowledge. Of course, that's, that's our main book. That's the biggest seller. The Bhagavad Gita. We just, this year, they opened a temple in Ayodhya. A Ram temple. So this year, there's a lot of interest in Ramayana. Many people want Ramayana also. But still, the Bhagavad Gita is very special book. The Bhagavad Gita is a very special book to keep. And we, we give it the most important place. It's difficult to give classes from Ramayana. It's a nice story to read. People are interested to hear. And then you could, you know, let them read the Ramayana and bring them into the Bhagavad Gita, introduce them. So we got thousands of people taking these courses, learning the, learning the main points of the Bhagavad Gita. There are many people waiting for Krishna consciousness. We, we just have to go out and find them. We have to make some, we have to have some desire to reach out to people, to give Krishna consciousness. That is our real business, distributing this message, sharing this message with other people. There's a lot of souls to be saved. We may say, oh, people are too fallen now. They, they said to Prabhupada, all people are too fallen. Prabhupada said, yeah, they were very fallen when I went too. <laughs> he said, it hasn't changed anything. <laughs> but people can become devotees. We have to give them the chance to do some service for Krishna. So the more we in, arrange festivals and functions and programs, the more opportunity there is for people to become Krishna conscious. We want to make all kinds of opportunities for people to get that Agyata Sukriti, to get that Agyata Sukriti, that chance, that un and without even thinking about it, they get this, this opportunity to do some pious activities for Krishna, to begin their devotional life. So Harinam Sankirtan is very important. Mahatma Prabhu, when he was here, he organized one Harinam Sankirtan, right? And was it in Amsterdam? Yeah. Harinam Sankirtan, very important. We go out on Harinam, sometimes we go out on Harinam and people are, hey, they'll say, where have you been? I never saw you for so long, you yeah. know. Krishna Shetra Maharaj, I was, I was watching the, the YouTube recording, he was at Radha Desh and, were, and he was saying, and he was talking about, he said, when I first became a devotee in Amsterdam, we would go up and down the street and we would sing this one tune, and he, he began Kirtan singing this one tune that uh, Hare Krishna, uh, something like Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Hare. Yeah, 
he said, when he became a devotee, that's what, what they were doing. The devotee, every day they'd be out there in the streets of Amsterdam and they'd do Harinam up and down the street. I was the same. I joined in London. Every day we'd be out on Harinam. And because we were out there on Harinam, George Harrison saw us out there on Harinam and he was impressed. He understood. He thought, wow. You know, he saw, you know, English weather, like in Amsterdam, it's not very pleasant, a lot of rain and wind, and, but still every day devotees would be out there trying to chant Hare Krishna and distribute the message of Krishna. George Harrison became inspired, he got, he got Bhaktivedanta Mana for the devotees. He gave us a big temple. We made it a temple anyway. So Krishna can give you the world if you're ready. <coughs> Are you ready? Prabhupada said, just like the Pandavas, they they'd had nothing before the battle of Kurukshetra. Then how many days did battle of Kurukshetra last? Huh? 18 days. So, are you ready to take part in Krishna's 18-day plan? <laughs> 18 days, he can give you the whole world. Are you ready? According to our qualification, of course, it would be difficult for us. We don't have anyone like Maharaj Yudhisthira like, to rule the world. But Krishna can give, he can arrange everything. We just have to cooperate with Lord Krishna's plan. Okay, any questions? Yes? Um, you mentioned about preaching and how uh, we can give Krishna to others and we should go on. Um, at the same time, one of the offenses is also to instruct a uh, faithless person about Krishna. Raj, how do you understand that in context of preaching to outsiders? Please forgive me for my ignorance. Yes, good, good question. The ninth offense enchanting the holy name, right? To instruct faithless persons about the glories of the holy name. Well, we find other things to instruct. We get them first to chant Hare Krishna. We don't need to tell them all the glories of chanting Hare Krishna. But we let them hear the holy name and we invite them to join in chanting. <coughs> And we give them prasadam. And we give them some basic knowledge, like you're not the body, you're a soul, you're struggling with your mind and senses. We give them some <coughs> basic knowledge. In other words, we develop their faith. People don't have faith, we have to give them faith. If we have faith, then we can give them also faith. So this, this is important. If we don't have faith, <laughs> if we don't have faith, then it's difficult to give other people faith. We have to be convinced this Krishna conscious process is genuine. It works. It's real. It's benefited me. It can benefit you if you take it up. Are you ready to take it up? So this is, this is the point that we want to cultivate their faith, give people faith. And as they get faith, then we can tell them the glories to the Holy Name. But we can tell everyone to chant Hare Krishna. We don't 
tell them the, all the glories of the holy name, but we get them to chant. We can tell them to chant. We can just say, please chant this mantra. Um, this desire to expand, because you gave the example of Prabhupada asking for the results, uh, that is there, that we want to preach, we want to expand, but at the same time, after a while, it also feels it's already very difficult to maintain our bhakti, in a sense, to protect what I have, what my family has, or the, the small congregation we have, to maintain the sadhana levels to maintain the taste to grow in te no, to grow deeper into Krishna consciousness that itself is becoming a struggle especially when we are superficial let's say you know we attend programs we go back but then weekly we are influenced also by external uh, influences and our sadhana level stays weak so how to balance between this desire to preach and to expand but at the same time to grow deeper inside and maintain what we have well, you have to decide which way you want to go. Do you want to go down or do you want to go up? <laughs> right? Are you going to are you going to try to increase your spiritual practice? Are you going to give up all these uh, deviations, all the materialistic plans for sense gratification? We make so many plans to try to enjoy, to be comfortable in the material world. How long will you be comfortable in this world? You have to give up this world one day. How long you can stay here? This world is temporary. Why you should make so many big plans for enjoyment and comfort for this, for this life? The life is very short. Make the best use of this life to become Krishna conscious. Of course, you have to you have to maintain what you, your 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 family. A devotee is not neglectful, but at the same time, you have to know what is important. You don't sacrifice your life just for being comfortable, just for living comfortably. You ha we have to understand that our real business in life is to develop our consciousness of Krishna. We have to have time for association. We have to have time to chant the holy name and to read the books, to worship Krishna. These things we have to do. We have to make a program. You cannot compromise on these things. We may say, people may say, oh, oh it's so difficult in this age to follow four principles. Can I just follow three? <laughs> no. <laughs> have to follow four. Right? People say, chant 16 rounds. Oh, it's so many rounds, you know. If I could, if I could just chant four rounds a day, you know, I could chant four rounds, it would be nice. But 16 rounds, oh, it's so many, oh no. And then after a while they say, you know, four rounds is too many, you know. Can I just chant one round? You know? Can I just chant one round? And after a while they say, can I just chant eight beats? You know? we'll, we'll, we'll always try to compromise. We'll always try to reduce the standards. And every time you reduce the standards, then you go further and further away from Krishna consciousness. So it's very important. Prabhupada said, no compromising. If somebody, if somebody came to Prabhupada and said, so, oh, it happened. There were these men, they were in Hawaii, and they were professional tennis coaches. They were coaching tennis and they came to Prabhupada, they said to Prabhupada, Swamiji, you know, we would like to get initiation, but we're very busy with our coaching. You know, we have to do a lot of training and coaching. We can only chant 12 rounds a day. Can we please get initiation? And Prabhupada said, no. 
<laughs> so the standard is 16 rounds for everyone. There are no exceptions. We have, we have to follow. And if we follow the process, then you get the result. You don't follow, you don't get any result. <laughs> so we have that free will, we have that independence, it's up to us. What do we want to do? Our duty is to do service for Krishna. You do service for Krishna, then you get, you, de you get more taste for the holy name. Shru shru shro shadadanasya vasudev kata ruchi shanmahat sevaya vipra punya tirta nashevana. By doing service, you will develop an attachment to Krishna and you develop an attachment for the holy name and you'll start to chant more. The more we do service, somebody has no taste to chant, let them do service. Then just serve Krishna. And by doing service, we get the taste for the holy name. It will come. You just have to keep serving and naturally the taste will awaken. You know, new devotees, but in the old days, of course, when I joined the Krishna Consciousness Movement, everyone moved into the temple and stayed in the temple. So in the ashram, then it's very easy to make advancement. Everyone wakes up early in the morning, right? And you stay in the ashram, everyone will sleep early and wake up early. So then we all go to Mongol Arti and then we chant Japa and, but of course sometimes you feel very tired, oh we were doing Harinam all day yesterday, I'm very tired, you know, you go to do Japa, oh, fall asleep. So then the temple commander comes and said, you go to the kitchen, help cut the vegetables. <laughs> Right? So you spend the whole morning in the kitchen cutting vegetables. So after cutting vegetables every morning, then you think, I want to chant Hare Krishna. <laughs> I don't want to just cut vegetables every day. I want to chant Hare Krishna. Any other question? Ms. Mataji has a question. Mm -hmm. She is not good in English, so he's telling me in Dutch, I will translate for you. Mm -hmm. She is telling, uh, we are trying, but sometimes it's, uh, the energy of Maya is very, very strong. So, what to do then? <laughs> But it's Krishna's energy, it's not Maya's energy. Maya is under the control of Krishna. If you take shelter of Krishna, then the Maya will, set, will stop. So it implies we are not really surrendering to Krishna then? If it, it's... Yeah, as soon as you start to chant Hare Krishna, just like as soon as you come in the room, if it's dark, you put the light on. Immediately, immediately the light comes and the darkness goes. So immediately you start to chant Hare Krishna, the Maya goes. Immediately you call out Krishna, the, the Maya goes. You have to take shelter of the holy name. We have to take shelter of the process of devotional service. Oh, you're feeling Maya is very strong. Maya is Krishna's energy. She is under the control of Krishna. Just like, I remember as a young child, we used to go to steal apples. <laughs> you know, we go wherever there's an apple tree, we go and 
get some apples for herself. <laughs> but the man with the apple tree had a dog, you see. And the big dog would come, you know, and we'd be up on the tree, <laughs> help, help. <laughs> yeah. And then when the man comes, immediately the man, he's got control of the dog. Right? The dog is under his control. So Maya is like that. She's under the control of Krishna. As soon as we take shelter of Krishna, Maya has no hold on you. You just have to reach out to Krishna. And how to reach out to Krishna? By chanting his names, calling his names. What did Draupadi do? They were trying to rip off her sari and she had five husbands and none of them could help her. So what did she do? <coughs> Go Vinda! Right? And Krishna came and the sari. See? So she is the example of the, the most chaste lady. She took shelter of Krishna. So we have, we are practicing every day to become more attached to Krishna. In fact, I have a question about like there are a lot of disturbances and uh, among the devotees also like Prabhupada gave us the instruction when we cooperate with each other yeah. then things will go properly but in most sanghas there is no cooperation like in Holland we have different sanghas different namahatas and we don't work properly with it cooperate with each other. So what to do to get that cooperation actually? What to do to get cooperation? Well, it starts with our own self. We have to be an example of cooperation. We have to, we have to cooperate with everybody and our example, that is the best preaching. We say example, is, it speaks louder <laughs> speak louder than words. <laughs> so that example, if we can show the example of cooperation, making an effort to cooperate with other people, to get along with others, that will have the good effect. That can impress, you know. Just putting aside our own desires and just trying to cooperate with everyone. Prabhupada said, your love for me will be shown by how you all cooperate with each other. So <coughs> cooperation, we have to put aside our own personal interests and we have to just be humble and tolerant and try to work together. Working together we, we become strong, but when we're divided, one stick is easily broken, but many sticks together cannot be broken so easily. So this is the principle, this is why we say cooperation is so important. We will be much stronger if we're all united and working together. Things may not be right, there may be problems, but they can be improved. But we'd have to, we have to be patient and try to work together and help everyone to come together. So making nice arrangements for programs and bringing people. This is our, big, our, our duty, to serve Prabhupada. We have to cooperate, we must cooperate. 
So Kali Yuga, the personality of Kali, he comes and he influences us. We start arguing with each other and we start making different, seeing differences. Oh, this person, oh, that person, oh, this temple, that place. We find fault. This is the, this is the personality of Kali influencing us. We should see our own faults and don't see faults in others. That is the best thing to do. Look at our own faults and don't look at the faults of others. See good in others. And those people who are senior to us, then we should, we should appreciate them, we should be eager for their association. And those people who are, are equals, we should make friends with them. And those people who are lower than us, we should be compassionate to them and kind to them. In the material world, somebody is lower than us, we'll ridicule them, we'll abuse them. And somebody who is our equal will avoid them. We won't want to be friends with them. And the senior people, those people who are senior to us, we'll try to also stay away from them. We will not like to hear from them. So this is described in, in the Bhagavatam. Narada Muni is telling Dhruva Maharaj how he should relate with different people. The senior, the equal and the junior. So relationships are very important. We have to work together. We have to be cooperative. It's difficult, but it's fun. To be together, we become strong. So we want to see our Krishna consciousness movement nice and strong. So many years we've been here in Holland. More than 50 years. So you want to make a nice atmosphere of nice centers. Den Haag is building one temple. We hope even this year may be finished. The land is given by the government. <coughs> and we were we were in Belgium and in Belgium they have the Hindu Hindu League of Belgium. And, the, and they're getting support from the government in Belgium. The recognized Hare Krishna movement is recognized as a, a Hindu culture and it's supported by the government. So these are very encouraging signs, very good signs, very important. In Den Haag they give, the government have given land there at a very low rent. And we're build, the building temple, it's going to be a nice center. So, preaching is going on. But we hope it will go on and flourish more and more. For Srila Prabhupada's pleasure, for Lord Chaitanya's pleasure. Okay. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Shula Prabhupada. Teacher.